Yeah, his drip, honestly, it's like a negative two. Um, but the the <laughs> attitude that he carries that drip with does kind of bring it up to like a one for me. It's like <laughs> he's just so damn dorky, but like so okay with being a dork. Hey, wait, that's a triple play. New episodes of Kenway. Oh, yeah. yeah. Open your mind at the first gate. Press play, no need to debate. Hey, wait, check me out. Yeah. Plot, then you can catch the hype. Golden Dawn, how we follow the light. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages? Welcome back to the AOA show. I'm your host, as always, Ian, along with the boy Isaiah. E yo, yo, hi, yo. <laughs> and today we're here talking Tower of God once again, part two of our discussions covering the episodes uh, 279 to 286 of season two. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar, we had questions post us in our community discord after our live streams. And if you guys want to participate in that, you could pose a question and we might just answer it during one of these discussions. And that's what we're doing today. So, um, if you guys like the content today, if you are new here, make sure you guys are liking if you're new or not, definitely like, but if you're new here, subscribe, hit that notification bell. So you don't miss any future episodes, content, etc. Make sure you guys are sharing with your friends because the more the merrier, the conversation is not just Isaiah and myself, it's you as well, the community at large. So get your friends involved and comment your thoughts down below. Speaking of talking, let us know what you thought of this video, what you thought of our answers to the questions, the questions themselves, your thoughts on Tower of God, these episodes, chapters, all of those thoughts. We want to know them in the comments down below. And speaking of comments, for those of you who have not heard yet, we are implementing a new little fun game where we are doing what we've dubbed the comment of the episode, where we will ask a question at the end of our episodes and if you watched all the way through, you'll know what that question is and how to answer it. So what you can do then is answer the question in your comment and then write whatever your comment was. So just put the answer to the question we posed and then whatever you were going to write anyway. And you could just be shouted out on the next episode. So this week, Isaiah has um, the lucky folks that are getting shouted out. Folk, it's one, one singular, <laughs> singular not plural, singular sorry. Um, yeah, so for this video, uh, the... Wire. Uh, so uh, our lucky commenter is Yal Rathol. Um, so he answered the question correctly. The question was, what two swords does Yuri yield? They are the green April and the black March. And his comment is, when it comes to Kuhn and Kessa, it seems to be less than he thought it would be. It, it seems to be less than he thought it would blow over and more than he thought it would. He thought he had successfully run away from the consequences by becoming a regular. Remember, only regulars and rankers can legally enter the inner tower. The tower is absurdly massive, and Hedon teleports you away from your problems when he collects you to make you a regular. So Kuhn didn't assume that Kiesa would get over their sister's death, but more that he had run somewhere Kiesa couldn't follow. Turns out he was secretly terrified she would pop out of the shadow somewhere and axe him. And that's a battle Kuhn couldn't brute force with, a ten, with his ten families' talent like he has with Hans. So this is referring to our last discussion in which one of the questions that brought up was what did we think Kuhn's emotional state was with meeting a sworn enemy? How much, uh, you know, how much, how much weight does Kiesa's presence have in Kuhn's mind? Because he makes a comment at, while he's like, while they're on this boat and, and he's sort of giving everybody the backstory that he, um, you know, he was kind of hoping that this problem would go away. And in our uh, initial discussion we were discussing about the fact we're like oh well okay that must have been like a mental thing on Kuhn's part and so this you know Yal is just sort of saying that it wasn't so much that Kuhn himself was like being in an arrogant way like ignoring the problem but rather that Hedon had taken to him to a place that theoretically most like people can't be followed mm -hmm. so with that you know forceful gap put between him and Kiesa um he assumed that this would just go away. But as we see in the panel and as uh, Yao says in his comment, that didn't mean that like Kiesa went out of his head and sure. it has actually been like a very heavy weight on his mind and, and seemingly his, uh, his conscious so yeah. far. And I'll take blame for that one because I was definitely the most vocal about my lack of sympathy towards Kuhn in this particular scenario, um, kind of misinterpreting what the panel exactly meant. So this was good for clarification on that. Um, he still is avoiding the problem in one way, shape, or form. So I do stand by that. Um, but it's just in a different way than I had initially pegged it for, uh, which definitely alleviates some of the pressure that I had on him there. So thank you for the clarification. Thank you for the comment. And thank you for watching until the end of the video. Yes. We, uh, we love you. A real one. So anyway, 
we're going to get into this discussion and the questions posed today. Um, so, Isaiah, you want to take away with the first one? Sure, sure, sure. So the first question we have comes from Cynical Aguero. Uh, it's nice to see that name again. I haven't seen Cynical Aguero in a minute. Uh, do you think there is a comparison between Kuhn and Endorsey based on their backstories, where their choices brought them to this point? With Kuhn, he chose Maria and getting exiled to the tower, whereas Endorsey was groomed by the snake charmer. Uh, so do I see a comparison between them? Yes. <laughs> uh, I actually think that they're the reason, you know, uh, from a character dynamic perspective, why I think Kuhn and Endorsey don't like hit it off because they are literally water and oil, you know, like they're, they're so similar that they actually like don't like each other, but it's, you know, it's that irony of like, they are arguably two sides of the same coin in the, in the sense that both of them, their initial upbringings were very, uh, traumatic <laughs> to put it, you know, uh, bluntly or to put it lightly. Um, and, and both had to do both had to do and live lives that are a obviously unconventional, but b definitely like warp your perspective in terms of like what what are relationships and and you know who deserves what from you and and like because it put them in a very like survival state of mind, right? Like they had to both of them in their own ways had to get through the the next day or, or had to find a way to avoid their you know the gazes of whoever it was that was trying to to come after them, um, and yeah, so I, I do see uh similarities with Kuhn choosing Maria as a way to get exiled from his family and endorse you with a snake charmer. Because if you think about it and you put them both side by side, to me at least, the parallels are that to both of those characters, Maria and snake charmer were ways out, right? Kuhn, you know, when Kuhn goes into his backstory, a lot of what he talks about is that his family, he was raised as a political tool by his mom for the name of the, of the Kuhn family. Um, and, you know, that, re that relationship, the dynamics, whether it was between him and his sister, his sister and his mom, what have you, were as, about as far from normal as they possibly could be, right? He makes it, you know, paraphrasing, but he makes a, a statement or, or something along the lines of, like, every day was fighting for your life in, you know, in that family. And, you know, the same thing with, with Endorsey to an extent where she's talking a lot about, like, yeah, the the uh, the family that raised me, which wasn't her, her like, birth family, um, but once she found out, basically, like, once she realized the the struggle that, like, that life provided her, the snake charmer coming in and giving her a way out, vice, you know, and then vice versa, you flipped out with Kuhn, Maria coming in and saying, well, I want to be the head of the family, too, but, like, to change things so that all of this stuff that's happening to you and me and us doesn't have to happen again. Both of these characters saw those people, saw those things, and said, like, yeah, I'm going to take that because it's a way that, like, I don't have to keep being in this scenario anymore and I can get out of here. And, like... Yes, there is an inherent part of that that is selfish, sure. But they were also both pretty young. So, like, I'm not, I would find it hard-pressed to, like, put that blame on them because they, they, all they probably wanted was to get out. All they probably, they were probably both incredibly suffocated by their environments and the conditions that they were under, um, which is interesting because they are both, all, you know, again, um, a lot, the, the, you know, two of the definitely much more cold-hearted and, and closed-off characters that we meet at the beginning of the story, and obviously through meeting people like Bomb, have since learned to open up and be a little bit more compassionate and understanding. Um, but yeah, so I definitely see comparisons not only just between them as characters, but between their backstories, because, you know, like I said, in a way, they're kind of two sides of the same coin. Yeah, I mean, I mirror a lot of the points that Isaiah said. He basically summed up the entirety of it. Uh, I, I would say, too, that <clears throat> a thing that they both struggle with is the repression of these older problems and the denial of them, uh, maybe in different ways. But again, just highlighting our, even our comment here um, that Kuhn is, is thinking that these problems are going to dissolve and fade away into his past and that they're never going to catch up with him. Um, but the thing is, is that they never go away. You just you have to confront them. Right. Is the thing. While endorses are with her, but she does this this repression where she just pushes it down into you know the the recesses of her psyche or whatever it is to be like no I'm you know but all things considered I'm pretty glad but it's like you're not you're not glad endorsee right like so they're both doing a similar thing but just taking different approaches to it um, they're at a crossroads and, and you know in that sense they they uh, they can run parallel to one another so. They are definitely interesting. They're, they're play off one another. Um, and I'm curious to see if they ever become friends at this point, because I feel like they share a little more in common than one might think at surface level, more than they even realize. And I think this yeah. was an interesting scene to kind of highlight a little bit of that. Whereas true, Kuhn, yeah, yeah. I think this is one of the time, the nicest 
that Kuhn has ever been to in Dorsey, ironically, is when he's calling her out yeah, on yeah. lying, right? Where yeah, he's yeah. like, you're lying. But the fact that he even he even called her out and didn't just let it go means that in that moment, he's like, I relate to you. Yeah, and yeah. on some level, I do care. Like it takes you, one to know it one. It takes yeah. one to know one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whereas like if he just ignored that, that would really show that yeah. he's like, she's lying, but I don't really give a damn. I can you see know? them because stranger things have happened. Yeah, you know? yeah, I yeah. I, I could see it at the end where it's like some some weird thing, but it's like, anyway, so... That's my answer to that one. Uh, moving on to the second question, we have by Emperor Dark North. What up, homie? Says, how messed up is Jihad from what you've seen of him? Quick thoughts on mentality, drip, and behavior, and anything you found weird about him. Was he what you expected Jihad to be? Wow, let's break this question down, huh? This is great. Uh, how messed up is Jihad from what, from what you've seen of him? Um, so I think he's messed up in the sense that he's willing to do some pretty terrible things, right? Um, you know, and that he clearly has, at least he purveys that he has this like flippancy for anyone who's going life that's going to come in the way of him and his rule. Uh, so that's definitely messed up that he's willing to just like make an orb because you didn't tell me your name in time. Right. Or whatever. Right. And then he just like kills people. But I actually don't think that Jihad and not that you're saying this or anyone else's, but I, I don't think Jihad's crazy by any stretch. I don't think that he's like some whack job. That's just like, Oh my God, like Arlene didn't do this. So like I explode with all this thing. And like that, that was part of it for sure. But I do think that Jihad has become almost beaten down and calloused to the, to how life works and his and his negative demeanor or whatever swapped him into a negative demeanor and this is where Arlene would hop in definitely eroded at all of the positive qualities that he had and the optimism that he might have had as an adventurer beforehand so i think he's just kind of you know he's come he's become what he most feared or was fighting you know in, in that in that time but i don't think it may, he's not like he's not like off the wall crazy in that respect i think he's he's human and unfortunately, his willpower was just eroded away until it kind of just broke. And now he's just like, that's it. You know, in his line where he says, you got to kill those that are, or you got to get rid of those that are against you. Then you got to get rid of those close to you. Then you got to get rid of the ones you love type thing. It's like, he does have regrets about that, it seems, right? And he's talking about it. It seems like to me, at least, that in this data version that he's putting up a facade that it's like, I'm this hardcore badass dude and like I had to do what had to be done. Like you don't understand. And while like he does believe that, in a sense, he kind of is doing the endorsey thing. Like I just said last time, it's like he's repressing that where he's like, yeah, no, that was that was the thing to do, you know? But it's like, now it's already done. He's not, he's like, I'm not looking back. Like I've already assumed this role, right? Um, at least is, that's my thoughts. So, but one thing that you could classify him crazy with is his drip. <laughs> um, I think, and if you want to call him a classified nut job, it's by what he's wearing, but I absolutely love it personally. Um, you know, like I said, I answered the mentality part, drip and behavior, like beyond the whole, you know, everything I just said, it was kind of hilarious. I'm not going to lie. Just seeing him come down looking just so damn goofy with those shorts and the big cape, his funny looking goggles with like the little uh, pilot strap things on the side. They're flapping in the wind. And it's just like, what? <laughs> it's like, he just, all of his clothes were just disorganized in a drawer. And like the first thing that he picked, he's like, I'm just throwing this on. Right. He has this like ridiculously large sword too. That just seems like so out of place for him. I thought it was absolutely hysterical. And I think, I think it's, it's just like, honestly, oh, like respectable to me in the sense that he is like, you know what? I'm gonna be like this and like, that's it. Like I'm, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Like, even if I look absolutely ridiculous in doing it, but, um, I thought that was hysterical and I definitely did not expect him to be like that goofy for sure. I mean, I expected Jihad to be, and I would assume a lot of people were in this boat. Uh, let me know if you were, but that, when you first read this, like Jihad almost seemed to be, I think Isaiah, we were off camera. You framed it as like a force of nature last time where it's like, he is the big bad, right? This is the, this is the calamity that has overtaken the tower and all of these people, all the terrible things happening are because of this guy. And so he must, you know, he's going to be this like totally cut throat, ruthless, like stoic thing. You know what I mean? Where he's like evilly petting the cat when we get to his thing. Right. And like a bond movie, but He's kind, he's just, he's kind of a freaking goofball and it's like actually hilarious. <laughs> and like, to be honest, obviously I don't like his ideals from what we've seen, but his character design and just his quirkiness and like that surface level personality, 
I absolutely love on that level personally. So those are my thoughts. I don't know what you got. Um, so how messed up is Jihad? Uh, so I think this question is a little tricky because I am personally of the mind that I, I, I'm a, I do 100% believe Edon. I do think that er, co- older, current Jihad came down to this hidden floor and revisited his data self and saw that he was reminded too much of who he used to be. And now that this current Jihad is a much older, much more callous, much more dictatory kind of person, um, was like, no, I can't. I'm not. So, because early in our last discussion, I initially in my head, which I could, I could still buy as an option, is that he came down here and fucked with his data as a precautionary measure. Because, you know, we from what we've seen of Jihad, from the lengths he's gone to uh, with all the other spells and and rituals and and rules that he's put in place are clearly designed so that nobody ever actually gets to confront or over uh uh overthrow him um so i could uh, i initially i was like i could totally see it as he did that to cover all of his footprints and be like nope now there's no possible way anybody can get my weaknesses or whatever and there might still partially be some of that in there but i do also think jihad is a very emotional person if the the whole (laughs) how the whole thing happened with arlene is very much proof of this so i could also see that even if he went down the hidden floor maybe not to initially do that being confronted with a version of himself that was so polar opposite to who he is now probably threw him into a rage because if that was the jihad who was still longing after arlene not knowing right and not knowing how things would end up um and our, and I would even argue that the the data jihad and the past jihad version was a lot closer to Bam, who Bam is as a person, where Bam is heads at right now. So the older jihad, of course, would be disgusted with that and would be like, again, um, for whether it's emotional reasons or, or precautionary or both, was like, no, you got to go. I'm like, you know, I'm run- this isn't the ship I'm running anymore, and people like you don't have a place here. So I have a feeling I definitely, like, you know, I, I would be very, like, thrown off the rails if, like, this was how Jihad was when he was younger, because from what we know about the time stretch uh, from the uh, from the floor of death, or I'm sorry, from the Hell Train and the God of Guardians, which is when we last hear about what Jihad was like at that stage, from the God of Guardians and the Hell Train to the Hidden Floor, the only real separation is the name hunt and the floor of death. So I would be hard pressed to say that between the name hunt station and the Hidden Floor, like all that shit. I mean, we know it didn't happen because we know the Arlene and V stuff doesn't happen until the very end of their climb. So, because after that, that's when he decides 134, like that's where we're stopping. So that Jihad, who was initially on the hidden floor, the one who's that data supposed to be from should be, should not be like this. I think this, I, I do think this Jihad is very messed up and I don't really fuck with him, but it's because I think this Jihad is a almost carbon copy of the current Jihad. Um, so that's as far as his mentality and his behavior. I, that's what I, I do think. It's interesting that like a lot of the you know or enough I will say of like that quirky you know uh, goofiness uh, is still in there, and I don't know necessarily like you know I don't know who's to say that like the current Jihad still doesn't have any of that, um, or if that is a little bit of the his past self still left behind. You know we'll have to wait and see. But I, I do think it's interesting, and, and like you were saying before, commented on what I was saying. Um, yeah, it definitely you know threw me for a loop because, you know, I, like, I'm sure many of us did expect him to be this, like, force of nature, you know, I blink in the world, everything in front of me explodes, like, I don't have any emotions kind of guy, and, and, you know, very stoic and all that stuff, so to see that he's, like, kind, you know, that he, that he's a dork, (laughs) um, was, was very, you know, very unexpected, and it is, it is kind of funny, and it, it, it's funny, too, because we, one of the things that in, uh, SIU brings it up in his blog post for those chapters is he's, like, yeah, bam, kind of went a little off the rails by deciding to insult Jihad, essentially, the first time he meet, the first thing out of his mouth is, you know, throwing salt in the wound, so to speak, for Jihad. Um, and But I, I'm not going to lie, bro. Like, I think that's kind of part of, that's like, that's part of the point. Is Like, from Jihad's perspective, even, like, I could see this weird thing where it's like, he expects you to insult him and will now use that as a way to retaliate against you because it's like, you just can't leave that nigga, that kind of nigga be, bro. He, some dude walks up with like fucking pilot ear flaps and shorts and you're like, bro, what do you do? He's got his race car bed cape so wrapped around his neck. I'm like, oh, I'm making, I'm picking on him. A li- at least a little, I got it. But see, then I think he uses that. He's like, oh, well now you've insulted me. Now I can eviscerate you and everyone you love. 
So, you know, that's all. I, he's just, he's yeah, his drip, honestly, it's like a negative two. Um, but the, the <laughs> attitude that he carries that drip with does kind of bring it up to like a one for me. It's like, <laughs> he's just so damn dorky, but like so okay with being a dork that it's like, you can make fun of him, but like, what do you, you can't even, that's it. You know what I mean? He's not, <laughs> A, he's probably stronger than you. So making fun of him in the long-term perspective is probably not the best move, but like, He's just, he's not sorry for it. He's not like, oh, sorry, this is the only thing my mom had ready for. He's like, no, I went into a store and bought this <laughs> purposely. And so I saw the mirrors, okay? I, I went in the dressing room. I know how I look. I'm a kid, you know, like all that shit. So, yeah, that's my thing on his whole, that's the 411 on Jihad. <laughs> that was fantastic. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next question. Go for it. Which is from Vladimir. Thank you, Vladimir. Uh, he says, what do you guys think Jihad was like before his future self came back and altered date, uh, unaltered his data's memories was the demon or in quotations or demon form in data jihad implanted by the king or did he have did he have it from the very beginning what are these seeds that he mentions um so i that's a very that's a very interesting question because when we again when we first read this i did think that when he has that moment where he's like what do you, look at me what do you see and that, like you know we don't see it but the implication obviously that there's some demon or demon form in jihad I did think was like something that was uh, always in him, you know, like from the study like that was just something present. Um, but I could see the, again, you know, like I, he, the thing that I always have to remind myself every time I'm like, no, that's crazy. Jihad wouldn't do that. Is like, there's nobody above Jihad. <laughs> like Jihad can do whatever he wants. If he wants to go down on the floor and make every living thing pink, he can do that <laughs> because nobody's going to stop Jihad, the King Jihad from doing that. So like, you know, every time I think that, I'm like, no, there are no, there is there are no limits other than you know whatever this world tower of God you know provides him. Um, so I I could totally see him implanting this like demon form or whatever in his data version as again as another precautionary measure. Um, but I could it is it I could also see again if we're if if the story is trying to draw parallels between him and Bomb. Bomb by the siege of hidden floor already has two demons in him now technically. Um, so and so I could see this this interesting parallel with like these brilliant men who had massive talent both had these you know crazy demons inside them and it was about how they how they overcame that or how they like how they fought through that and and like what did they let that define them or not and and by how much because i could easily see jihad's demon form or demon or whatever um definitely sort of really taking hold of his psyche especially again like i said once we get up to higher floors and the whole the arlene incident um but I do think Bam personally is not going to be, at least ultimately, as um, you know, as persuaded. Let's just say by 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 the red Thresha and the the blue one, <laughs> um, you know. Uh, so I I do think it's interesting that uh, yeah I don't know it really I do think it could be either or I'm not too sold in either camp to be honest. Um, and what are these seeds that he mentions? Um, I do think much like I was saying in my first discussion, and you know, again, this is just context clues I'm picking out from like things that Wang Nan has said, who also mentions the exact same thing is I do think the King seeds refers to Jihad's DNA. Like it refers to his biological, like his blood. Like you have to, like there is some link to the King that you must have, excuse me. And that link is like his seed, meaning his blood, like his, his DNA is in you. I mean, we know how important this stuff is. You literally a, like that's what makes a princess a princess is that they have some of his blood. Like that's it. They get some of his blood and they're, they go from normal person to a princess who's like, you know, like un, unfathomable in terms of just raw strength. Um, and that that blood alone can kill and do, has killed most people. Like to become a princess, that's a ritual in itself. You have to survive that encounter. And so I, I do think that it's like not anybody could have that. And so that that might even be like a, you know, like a code, a code word or, or code phrase that like they're, that that is referred to as, you know, they're like, oh, you have the king seed which means like, oh, you are, you have heritage, direct lineage to the king. Um, so I, 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 again, I do think, like I said in my first, in our first discussion, uh, in Jihad's very gloaty, his very like, I, I have this because I, I own it. I have the right to be this. Like I deserve to be king. I have a right to be king. Like that's where that comes from is he's like, I'm the one who has this blood. Nobody else has this blood and therefore nobody has this power because I'm meant to have, like, it, it, you know, it's, a, it's him being very, proclamation -y and very gloaty. Um, those are my thoughts. Yeah, I um, I think in terms of the demon form, I think that it was something that was eventually acquired 
or awakened. Like if it was something that was always inside him to begin with, it was, it was dormant. Um, but if it, but I, I do think it was something kind of like bomb situation where it was, he was bestowed some sort of power and that he lets that power kind of run rampant when it needs to being like, this is the real me. I'm succumbing to this. Um, you know, I'm putting up a facade where his bomb just seems to be kind of unbothered. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. <laughs> like every time he's like, you want to be evil yet? Bomb's like, let me hit you with some philosophical shit real quick. Yeah. And it's just like, all right, I'll be quiet. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Call no me. No blue need demon. Me. I'm busy. Yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah. It's like, bomb's just blame like, a nigga for trying. <laughs> 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 I'm stuck here. I might as well try and persuade you every once in a while. It's like a telemarketer. They just won't give it up. But, um, yeah, I think, I think Jihad eventually succumbed to whatever it was because he needed that power, that this God complex thing that even Bomb does struggle with a little bit, right? Where he's like, well, if I become a, a God, I can just save everyone type thing. And then what happens is that you get too much power and it's like, well, not only can I save everyone, but I could just have them do exactly what I want them to do, you know? And it's like, there's this dynamic. You, you know the drill, how it goes. So I think Jihad unfortunately succumbed to that, um, that power. And uh, what are these seeds that he mentioned? So a couple discussions back, that's what I said. I was like, okay, it's probably literally his seed in that sense. Last discussion, it was 1030 at night and I was totally shot. Um, so I was just like, I have no clue. And so I'm kind of midway between that now uh, in the sense that I actually, the more I think about it, I don't think it's his literal seed anymore. And the only reason now I say that is because of new light now and jihad says that i am i have the seeds of the king so the way i interpreted it is that he is bestowed whatever this is so if it was his seed then he wouldn't really have to be bestowed it per se he's the one bestowing it so i don't know anymore if it's like i think it's like some weird prophetic thing where it's like he deems himself chosen and same now it correlates to wangnan as well they look almost identical, you know what I mean? And, and their thing, like, there's some thing where it's like they are given the right, like they are planted as whatever. Like, I think it's some metaphorical meaning. Um, you know, like I said, it's just like it was weird that Jihad was like, you know, I, you know, I've been given the, I, I'm, I'm chosen. Like, I have the seeds of the king. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't know that I now I'm just more confused. <laughs> uh, but I guess my point is, is I'm like kind of down the middle on on what that actually is. So it looks like he has something to say. Go ahead. What if the demon form is the seed? Like what if the seeds Ooh. are those demon forms? Because the only thing that we know about the demon form from the encounter with Jihad is those freakish red horns that like came out of him. Uh, horns that Wang Nan also has on the back of his head. Mm. So what if like those are identifiers and that's like people who you see that. Oh. And again, maybe with the blonde hair and just the likeness or whatever, it's like, oh, he has the seeds of the king. So maybe that demon in some lesser form or some different version is also in Wangnan. And Wangnan has a seed of the king because those seeds are like the, the like you said, the powers bestowed upon Jihad, which were or which is that demon thing that's inside of him. That's actually a really good Prediction. I, I don't. I don't know. We do know that there are demons, like literal demons, in here, right? White makes a contract with one, so it's like not out of the question. The administrators themselves. I don't know what the hell they're smoking, but like they're crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like blobs that are just changing their form and just like blah, just like puking acid rain and doing whatever the hell they want. They can't get it together. Um, just making contracts and shit. So I don't. I don't know. I think. Uh, I think that's that could be you could be onto something there with that, where it's like. You know, yeah, I, I've, de I've deserved this divine right, like whatever. So I don't know. I, uh, I'm curious, but anyway, uh, moving on to the next question here. Um, so I actually want to say that this next question out of order, I want to save the, the fourth question actually for last, because I think it's a good way to close out our, and our predictions for where this arc goes okay. past the question. Okay. So we'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to say this other question here, and it's by uh, Ryu. So thank you very much for the um, for the question. It says, now that we've seen how quickly Data Edan went against Data Jihad, as soon as he started straying down the wrong path, do you think there's a possibility that the real Kun Edan might also be against the real Jihad? Why did Data Edan split off from Jihad so easily, but the outside Edan continued to serve him all the way to the 134th floor? This is a really good question. Um, and obviously it's just all, you know, predictions and, and theories and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I do, so I think it's one of two things. 
um, on the surface level here. I think it's either that Kun Edan along with Jihad, because I'd mentioned that he's gotten callous to this whole thing, right? And it's like, it's not that he's crazy, and all of a sudden it's just like, you know what I mean? It's like this was a gradual process, and now, unfortunately, he is where he is. It's not out of the question that other people that can happen to that have climbed with him. So there might be something to be said about, like, as they went up, they both, along with other leaders, got kind of entrenched in this, like, the higher you go, the more hell you see, right? Because before they conquered these floors, like, they look like a paradise now, but that's because they've established civilizations on every floor. Before that, it was the big blob monsters doing whatever the hell with these crazy tests, at least as far as we know. I could be wrong, but, like, you know, I would assume it's, like, each floor you go up, it's like... Y'all ready for this one? You know what I mean? And it's just like, you go up there, it's death, you know? So it's like, I, you know, that's what I'm assuming anyway. So it's not like, oh, what a hotel are we catching? But um, so yeah, I think that, you know, that could scar you. That could give you like this PTSD and this like, you've seen some shit type thing, right? So I, I don't think Kun Edan is exempt from feeling that. He's susceptible to it as well as Jihad, as well as anybody else, right? So I think, you know, that he may have been, you know, just more cemented in that in that power and what it brought, and he kind of just went along like with jihad, kind of eroded at his his positivity, etc. But I think there is another option here too, and I think that this would be the more lighthearted one, and I guess the more hopeful one is that actually Kun Edan is still against jihad in the upper floors, but now it's a matter of like more of like an undercover style thing. Um, where he's, you know, he's like playing a face and he really does kind of disagree with what's going on or whatever. Um, he's just like, he hasn't found the moment or he just knows he doesn't have the stuff to, you know, go back against it. Um, and, and that is what it is. And and then the third option would be that he realizes what it is and he just kind of is in the, I'm going to do my own thing boat. Um, but the only thing, the only reason I don't think that's the case is because of this Kun Edan is indicative of anything is that he actually does care based off his verbiage he uses towards jihad. Like he's pissed that he is that. But again, if that's the case, it might've just been with the first option where he's kind of gotten like eroded and maybe he's not entrenched in like, Mwahaha, I'm evil. I'm going to do my own thing. But he's just like, I don't really give a damn. Like I'm like, I'm pretty callous to it now. I'm gonna do my own thing. Um, but those are the, those are the things that I'm bouncing around with in my head. You got anything? Yes. Um, so I do think that. Uh, so I, I, I think that Edon, the reason that like the, there is something to be said that like for being on the hidden floor, I think the data versions because the data versions of, you know, whoever it is that they are on the hidden floor don't just like, like stop living and like existing sure. as while they're on the hidden floor, like basically waiting for more data from their their. Uh, real or outside counterpart to be put in them they like exist and like still think about things and continue to to live on and whatnot so i think there's something to be said for like it's almost kind of funny if you look at it that the data version of edon and the real edon much again like i think the data version of like someone like han sung and and outside han sung um have gone on divergent paths now and they've split in terms of their personality because the only thing the data versions uh, essentially the data versions of these characters get the benefit of, like, a crazy amount of introspective time. Like, they get to just kind of sit on the hidden floor and think about, like, themselves, the world, the tower, everybody in it, what any of this even means. So I could see an argument again, especially because we're talking about the data versions, which I believe to be the younger versions, and in that sense, the much more uh, rightful, the much more, like, pure-hearted adventurer versions of these characters. At this stage, yeah, maybe Edon was like, whoa, Jihad, like, hold up, you're stepping on some lines here. And again, because uh, my the other thing that I'm, I'm thinking about now is that, like, if this version of Jihad is the, is the king version now, the, you know, so if that version of Jihad is here, the version of Edon we're dealing with is still here. So this version of Edon only fucked with this version of Jihad. Which, if these two swapped, essentially, or not swap, but if, if the older one just implanted his, Edon's not going to fuck with that jihad. Because, like you said, if Edon, because I do believe there could be something to be said where, where now, like, because the question says, well, now that they're on the outside, why does it seem like Edon is now still serving with uh, the current jihad? I do think there's something to be said that Edon, current Edon, has been so beaten down by the tower or has become so eroded. Because we also know that even with this state, this version of Edon that, like, wanted to do, 
you know, wanted to do the right thing, whether it was it was for Jihad, whether it was by, you know, for himself, he's got, like, a code or whatever, um, that he's also, like, not, he's not a bomb, right? He He's not, like, going to take it upon himself to do things for other people, for other people's sake, right? We do know him to be very, like, self-serving first, and we know him to be, you know, pretty, at least, again, just from context, because we picked off from how everybody in his family talks about him, um, kind of a piece of shit. So, like, I wouldn't, I don't think it's off the table to be, like, he may have thought this now, like when he was uh, a younger, you know, a younger man. But now that he's climbed the whole tower with Jihad or gone up to the 134th floor with him and seen the same things that Jihad has seen, he's like, you know what, man? Like, whatever. I'm done. Like, whatever. Fuck it. I don't even care anymore. Like, like you're right. Why do we, like, why should we not be in charge of these people and telling them what to do? Or, like, or he might even be in a, in a, a semi version of himself on the hidden floor where he's like, you know what, like, I'm not going to be your tool here, but, like, I'm no hero. I'm not trying to fuck with you or stop. I'm going to go do my own thing with my family. Like, you do whatever you, I don't care. Do what you want. I'm going to do what I want. And, and, like, that. But I do think that the version, the real reason that the version of Data Edon is like this with Jihad is because a younger, more hopeful, pure-hearted version of Edon um, is meeting like, he's meeting the, the tail end opposite of the Jihad that that Edon knew and fucked with. The, I don't think the Edon, the past Edon, would have climbed with Jihad or continued climbing if Jihad was like the way the data version is now. I do think that, like I said, my, with my theory of the data, you know, being altered or, or messed with is why he's got, su- like, such a visceral problem in terms of the way he even speaks to him. He's like, you're not, you're not real. You're fake. Like, this isn't the jihad I know. And that's why. Because this, this Edon, like I said, I, I, I think using Bam as a focal point is probably, you know, and obviously Bam's just a different character. And, he, and, you know, they have their, you know, they have their nuances and their differences and all that. But in terms of, like, the mentality of where these guys were when they were climbing, right, I think that both of them, maybe a little bit worse or off, were much more closer to where Bam is as in, in terms of like, they were not like ready to just start axing and icing people like on a moment's notice. They were like, they were, there was still some purity in them. There was still some like decent C, you know, some, some good human being left in them. And th- we see that in Edon, right? We see that in Edon. And that's why he vividly doesn't like Jihad because he doesn't see that in this Jihad. This is not <laughs> hashtag. This is not his King. <laughs> this is not Jihad. Well said, sir. <laughs> well said. I'm going to give you a break here. I'll read off the last question. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're both going to talk about it anyway. So the last question comes to us by the Fire Potato. Thank you, Fire Potato. It says, what are some thoughts, hopes, and predictions for what will come out of the incoming training arc? So this is why I want to save this question for, for last because I think it flows perfectly into what our predictions for the overall arc are. Um, and man, do I love myself a good training arc. Like, I love a training montage. This is going to be sweet. My my hopes, just to start, are that Bomb learns some, like, specific Kuhn-style stuff, right? Where it's like being that Kuhn Edon you know, Bomb could just basically get slapped and he learns the move, which means he's basically like a sponge. So he's not limited necessarily to any one style. Um, he's just proficient in in ones over others because that's what he enjoys and that's what's good. But I would like to see some like tricks of the trade that are given by Kuhn Edon that like maybe only the Coons would know um, or something that he's been hiding or whatever the case might be and Bomb being able to utilize that now to maybe synergize even more with Kuhn AA or whatever the case might be. I think that's really cool. Also, Kuhn Edon is technically considered an irregular, so there could be more strictly irregular techniques besides let's just make a black hole with our fingers, um, you know, in his arsenal that he could be teaching Bomb as well. So that'll be something that's really sweet. Um, I'm curious to see if, because I think he took the squad with them, right? Like he didn't just yeah. take Bomb. So like Kuhn's there, you know, like yeah, Young yeah, Kuhn yeah, is there. Yeah. So I'm curious to see if Young Kuhn gets any sort of training as well, just inadvertently through it. You know, if Edon is just like, I didn't say I was training you. I said I was training Bomb. That's the deal. Like, piss off, kid. I don't really care. Or if he's like, okay, this works because of X, and, like, he picks up some some tricks of the trade, too, which seem to really go along with complement his style. Well, like, you know, he's a coon. So, so that would be really cool uh, to see. I mean, they're going to have to go through some rigorous training. I mean, he's got a month. A month, in a weird way, is, like, a, a good amount of time and no time at all. Like, depending on what... For Bomb, that's a lot of time yeah. in the sense that, again, he gets slapped and learned a technique. 
how many times can we slap bomb in a month? Yeah, a lot. You know what I mean? Like he might he he might just be caught up. Um, yeah, yeah. He's just slapping him with all these techniques. That what would kill him? Helping him? <laughs> Did this technique kill him? No, hit him with another one. Yeah, like let's see. He's just gonna be like a walking jackbox of just like all these different abilities. You know, by the time he gets there. Um, but you know, in the sense of like battlefield awareness and raw experience and things like that, a month is not all that much time as well for someone like, you know, Jihad, uh, being that he kind of what bombs ass that first time. And this was, you know, brings us back to earlier discussions where we were like, I'm curious to see where bomb stacks up against Jihad. We got our answer, <laughs> you know? So like, oh, well. he's get, yeah. And bomb has been busted up to this point. So it's like, Whoa, Jihad was really busted up yeah. to this point. So I'm curious to see where we go. And, and if anything, I'm, I'm super excited for this. I mean, obviously I think bomb is going to, if not win, do enough that like, he's able to not just get molly whopped again, obviously. Cause then this arc would be really awkward if he's just like, give me a month. And then it just, he completely gets killed again. Um, so I, you know, I'm curious to see how that goes and, and you know, everything that follows, but I don't know. What do you got? So, uh, first off, I, yeah, I do also love me a good training arc. Um, you know, something about like the, the prep before the battle, mm-hmm. when you get to like see it all just, uh, you know, just kind of makes all the, the, the stuff in battle hit that much more. Um, so some of my, my hopes, my hopes, I do align with what you were saying where, uh, obviously I want Bam to learn some, some dope new, like a regular type technique maybe from Edon or like something that Edon's got up his sleeve that he's like, all right, I'm gonna hit you with this. You know, you'll probably take a, a minute for you to pick up and he hits bomb once and bomb's like, I got it. And he's like, Oh, <laughs> um, you know, cause that, that it's just, it's, Oh, that's like, I feel like the, the visceral dopamine payoff of bomb's character for us as a reader is like, we, we know that every character he meets is going to like, not understand how he works and be like, hold on kid. And he's like, no, nah, I'm good. And it's like, it's Bob. Don't like, yeah. Um, so that'll be cool. But I, I, to be honest, and and I think that's what's so funny about this dynamic is obviously Edon's whole uh, attempt here or, or mission is to train Bob, right? He probably really isn't, doesn't give a single fuck about anybody else there, but they are there. And one person specifically, Kuhn, um, has might have a thing or two <laughs> to to say to him or interact with him. I, 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 I need, not want, I need there to be I need some Coon family drama resolution like I need because my other thing I thought when we went into this I thought it was going to be Coon um and, and granted uh Kiesa I'm not sure if that's how you if that's how her name is said but granted Kiesa is more of a sworn enemy to Coon so she's not really like an independent person who's like here on the hidden floor um but I, at first, I thought it was just going to be Edon he was the only person we'd be meeting here from the Coon family but now that we have a Sencio and young Mr. Uh, Macheni here, like we've got like a small version of the Kuhn family here. I'm very curious to see how Kuhn, who at this point, obviously none of these other Kuhns would know of, they don't know of his existence because he wasn't born yet, um, like would handle this. Because obviously like there's no way to hide that he's a Kuhn. <laughs> they have such very like, you know, distinguishable, uh, vis- uh, you know, physical features. Uh, so I'm curious to see like how uh, how that interaction goes. Um, you know, again, we know that Edon this version of Edon is a much more, I mean, I keep saying we know, I guess technically we don't know, but I have a feeling, I have a very strong hunch, uh, that this version of Edon is a much more, uh, like, hopeful, or at the very least, a much more, like, pure version of who he was when he started Clemens Tower, but that doesn't mean he's not still Kuhn Edon, and Kuhn Edon, from what we've gathered, uh, from people like Kuhn and everybody else in this family has talked about him, is kind of a piece of shit, so I could see, and especially with, we see with the way he talks to, like, Asensio and stuff, um, and even things that Sensio said about him in the latest chapters, he's like not the most patient. He's not the most loving and caring father. When, you know, we're talking about the family dynamics. So I wonder like how this is going to clash. And I do actually think that Kuhn is going to end up picking up techniques from Edon, but I don't think he's going to train him. I think Kuhn is going to either observe or notice Edon doing things. And it might not even be, he picks them up from Edon. He might learn them from like young Macheni or young Asensio. Um, but I do think, that family, because they're all so proficient in like the spear bearer, more physical combat side, are going to be like, yo, you're, a co- why don't, why do you just use lighthouse? Like, you don't fight or like, you know, whatever. And like, he's going to learn, because like, A, I just need, I need my boy to learn some, some physical hand to hand, like, you know, I'm going to knock your shit off, like, technique. But I do all, again, to be honest, my, my, my main reason for wanting to see it is just this family. Kuhn obviously has, 
the Kuhn family, I should say, has such obvious, like, massive family drama and, like, these relationships are about as dysfunctional as they can get. So I'm curious to see, you know, again, just how they interact, how some of the other people interact with the Kuhn family, uh, like in Dorsey, let's say, because of her whole princess heritage. And I'm also curious to see what's going on with that, you know, that very odd moment that happened at the end of the last chapters where when Dorsey came into the room and just saw Jihad, she was like paralyzed. She was frozen, like and couldn't move and was like in a trance almost. Um, I'm curious to see what that has to do if she ends up like revealing like, yeah, again, Jihad's got another countermeasure in place where if a princess looks at him, they just freeze. And it's like, damn, bro, this dude just has everything locked down. Pencils don't roll on the floor without Jihad knowing. <laughs> and it's like, so I, I'm, I'm curious about that. I'm curious to see where our main characters are going to grow. Uh, like obviously it's a training arc what new moves they're gonna learn but like the relationships that come out of that because obviously we're not just talking about Kuhn Edon we're talking about like I said Asensio he's gonna be there uh young Macheni's gonna be here and and those are people at least you know uh Macheni because we actually we don't know what's going on with Asensio as far as the outside of the tower or outside of this floor um you know, I, I'm curious to see what Kuhn maybe thinks of her, what she thought, what she was like now. And again, if this is like this tower just fucks and crops people up, what she was like now and maybe like how did she end up like the, you know, the way she is now, which it, again, just picking out of context clues here uh, from like her conversations with Yuri. She seems to be a much cold, more cold hearted person and she seems to be very like. Now I'm a princess of jihad, and I'm going to act and behave the way a princess of jihad should, and, and fuck all your emotions and anybody who's got anything else to say about it. So that's what I'm most excited for. <laughs> Hell yeah. Coon family drama. We need like a sitcom show with all the coons. <laughs> it's like the Brady Bunch or whatever, and it shows like Edon and then his 10 wives or a million, and then it shows like all the kids popping up, and there's just like drama in the house, and it's like, Aguero, where is the toothpaste? It's like, I told you to stop leaving it in the toilet every time you just, like crazy stuff. But anyway... That is our discussion today, and I hope nobody leaves their toothpaste in the toilet. I just kind of <laughs> puked that out of my mind. I don't do that. <laughs> Covered his tracks, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, folks, hopefully you enjoyed our discussion today. I know we sure did. If you did, make sure you guys are liking the video, subscribing to the channel, hitting that notification bell, sharing with your friends, and commenting your thoughts down below. What did you think of the questions? What did you think of our answers? What do you think of these chapters? And what are your thoughts on these questions as far as you, the way you would answer them, right? Um, our question of the video here is going to be, what position is bomb? Nice, easy softball I'm throwing at you here. Uh, so for anyone who has watched till the end of this video, answer the question and then write your comment and you might just show up in our next Tower of God discussion. Don't want to miss it. But also huge shout out to our patrons, uh, Stoic and Nathan. Big shout out to you guys, along with all the other ones that help us do what we do, make this a possibility for us to make the best content that we can to bring to your guys' front porch and for you to enjoy. Um, but until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you on the flip. Peace. Peace. Ninjas are samurais. Blaze of the cool knives. Find me in the leaf of the cloud. Screaming out Bankai. We just some ghouls though. Who likes seeing parts fly?